Welcome to our presentation uh, specifically with regard to um, generating and understanding the ATAR, which is new in Queensland. Uh, and in 2020, um, our very first year 12s will be receiving an ATAR in December at the end of their year. What is an ATAR? Across Australia, the ATAR is the standard measure or rank of a student's overall achievement. And what that means is, in Queensland, is that we've replaced the OP score uh, to replace it with a, a tertiary rank that is expressed in far more finer grain terms. Rather than 1 to 25 in the OP, it's now on a 2,000 point scale from 99.95 all the way down to zero. And um, Queensland now falls into line with the rest of Australia that has not uh, an identical process for generating an ATAR, but uh, very similar ones. So who calculates, calculates and releases the ATAR? This is primarily the responsibility of an authority called QTAC, the Queensland Tertiary Admissions Centre. Uh, it's responsible for calculating and uh, taking the results from the QCAA and going on to, uh, to quality assuring and calculating the ATAR. And I would en encourage families to visit the QTAC website to learn more about that process. With regard to calculating ATARs, a student must first be eligible in Queensland to receive an ATAR, and that means they must do a combination of subjects, but uh, bottom line, they must include at least four general subjects. So they can complete five or six general subjects. If they are only completing four general subjects, one of the other must be an applied subject, such as essential English or social and community studies as an example, or a vocational course at Certificate 3 level or higher, for instance, a Certificate 3 in Business or a Certificate 3 in Fitness. Uh, so students must also satisfactorily complete an English subject, and by law in Queensland, a student must study an English subject, uh, and they must pass it to be eligible for an ATAR. That doesn't mean that the English result will be used in the calculation for an ATAR should um, other subjects be of more value to the ATAR. The ATAR is calculated uh, first of all with QTAC receiving the student's final subject results of units 3 and 4 only. Unit 3 begins in term 4 of a student's year 11 adventure at Kenmore State High School. Then the results are scaled and that means they are held up against all results across Queensland and students five best subject results will be used uh, to generate an ATAR score and a tertiary rank. Students are then placed in descending order from 99.95 uh, based on merit and, um, and then there are uh, numerous cuts of the thousands of students that receive an ATAR in Queensland. So rather than uh, over 700 students receiving a particular OP band as in the old days, approximately 30 or 31 students uh, with our numbers in Queensland at the moment will receive each fine-grained band of, of an ATAR. The intersubject scaling uh, is uh, an important process um, whereby in the old system the QCS test was the vehicle by which there was uh, relativity and scaling introduced into the process at a school level. Uh, the scaling process in the new system is at a Queensland level and that means um, there's a recognition that some subjects, and I'll use uh, specialist maths as an example, that may um, have more rigour, attract more competitive students, or have a complex level of difficulty that may be different from another subject. So that is taken into account and it's done by QTAC by looking at the subject results of, of students in each of those subjects and comparing them uh, across the state. It's very important to separate in your mind as families the difference between a student receiving a QCE and the importance of making sure that they're on track and not at risk of not attaining a QCE and the ATAR. They are two entirely separate things. So the QCE is, uh, is with regard to a student um, um, satisfying a particular amount of learning at a particular level to be successful. It is a benchmark of Queensland performance. On the other hand, the ATAR tells us about a student's rank and position. It is about um, their, uh, their position um, with regard to other Queensland students. So they're very, very different and um, I encourage you to um, explore the QCAA website with regard to the QCE if you'd like to know more and the ATAR website. Does every student need an ATAR? Absolutely not. It is entirely legitimate, very common and quite valid for some students, um, particularly those heading towards uh, work 
and vocational pathways such as an apprenticeship that um, do a course of, of subjects in a learning program at Kenmore where they are not eligible for an ATAR. Um, for those students that may not receive an, an ATAR and still want to pursue a tertiary pathway, there are many other avenues towards tertiary study. For instance, through a VET qualification um, and also bridging and preparation courses. Finally, there are some subjects uh, that students may do where universities offer an adjustment factor and used to be called in the OP system bonus points or bonus ranks and they are additional points that may be added um, if a student is in um, subjects that universities or Queensland recognise as, uh, as quite valuable. Um, for, for example, languages and specialist maths. Thank you very much for listening uh, about uh, uh, ATAR. I encourage you to go on with the videos and learn more about the subject selection process at Kenmore.